welcome to a Proven Gamer Review. We're here to talk about To the Rescue, a dog shelter simulator. I'm your host, Resident Daryl, here on behalf of ProvenGamer.com, and I have brought a very special guest. This is going to be a review unlike any other review that I've ever heard, and I think that most people have ever heard, because I brought in a puppy rescue simulator expert. I brought in my daughter, Zoe Butterfly. How are you doing? I'm um, pretty good. All right. So we were given a review code from ProvenGamer.com to check out To the Rescue, a dog shelter simulator. simulator. I, I want to call it Puppy Simulator because we played that Barbie game together. <laughs> and so we were given this uh, this review code to check it out. And this game has been out for a little while. I was doing a little bit of reading, a little bit of research, as they call it. I and don't think anyone calls I'm it I'm pretty that. sure they call it research. And it looks like this game came out on Steam at least a year or so ago. And it has had a bunch of features added to it and then was ported to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so I want to break our conversation, our review discussion, into a handful of segments, okay, to kind of shape the conversation. Mm-hmm. For So what I want to do is I want to get your overall thoughts and then I'll give my overall thoughts because you spent way more time with the game than I did. This is not my style of game. It's mine, though. It is 1,000% your style of game. So once I started <laughs> messing around with this game, I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is a Zoe. This is a Zoe game. You, and just a little bit of background, you want to open a pet shelter. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, for years and years and years, you've been drawing out blueprints. You've been coming up with business models. You've been talking about this for a long time. And whenever I was given this code, I'm like, oh, yes, this is a Zoe game. So. <laughs> For um, preference, I guess, or well, for preference, uh, for context, we played on the Switch Lite. We did not put it on the actual Switch. We didn't play it on the TV blown up. We played solely on the Switch Lite on the go. Uh, you would play during the day. I would play a little bit in the evenings and sometimes in the mornings. And that is very important because some of the things I've read about the game was that it doesn't run very well on certain platforms. As a matter of fact, uh, I was getting the assets together, you know, for this review, and I stumbled across some things saying that hey, it runs like crap, you know, blah blah. blah. Not on the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite ran great. Perfect. I think so. I I can't speak to that outside of some of the glitches that we did run into. Some of the it was only two or three. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we just got to make sure we cover that because they mm-hmm. were game stopping glitches. They weren't game breaking glitches, but they were definitely. Uh, game stopping glitches. They were a little annoying. Yeah, a little annoying. But uh, for the most part, our experience was pretty solid on the Nintendo Switch Lite. So and that that's just kind of put that out there. So what I want to do is I want to get your uh, general thoughts. Now I know you're going to have more to say about the game than I did because you spent a substantial amount more time in the game than I did. So I'll give my kind of general thoughts, and then I'm going to kind of kick it over to you. So for me, um, the game reminded me a lot of Stardew Valley. Uh, it's a simulator. Simulators are not really my specialty. Is I, don't, I can play some simulator stuff, um, you know, but as far as a game where your daily tasks are to manage systems and to, you know, in this game, make sure your dogs stay clean. There's not poop everywhere. Make sure they're hungry. Make sure you spend time with them. You walk them. You don't neglect them. You have almost to manage their sims style mm-hmm. you know they're definitely yeah their their sensibilities and their love management it's like <laughs> so, sims as if they were dogs a hundred percent with stardew valley with graphics. stardew valley graphics exactly that's exactly what this is and so the idea is you manage these dogs and their relationships and you know you kind of build up their little bars not that there's actual bars but you know what i'm well, saying actually there is if you go into their pet profile there's like hunger water and clean, cleanse okay very yes but like i was the way i was describing it you know what i'm saying it's not like that's visible based on the actions that you do immediately yeah. but um and the idea is that you then pair them with the right person to adopt mm-hmm. them um so general thoughts i thought the game was a little frustrating i thought it was a little difficult to control i thought that the leash mechanic was very finicky. Every time I would try to leash a dog, especially it's in a bit the extra, it is a little extra, especially in the very beginning too. Because in the very beginning, when you have to leash your first dog, it's like, oh my gosh, this is how do you how do you do this? And so the first time I played the game, you were actually asleep. I was running around. And I'm like, I I was like, oh my gosh, I can't leash this little puppy. 
I can't leash this little dog. Oh, the one that's outside. Yeah, the one they call lightning or whatever. Yeah. I couldn't leash him. I, I just couldn't get it to work. <laughs> I got super, super frustrated. And actually, I, I actually got so frustrated that I put it down for. I was like, you know what? I got. I'm gonna go do something else. <laughs> Anyways, with that being said, I was able to do it first try. Yeah, well, you're better than I am. <laughs> but it's not. It's not that it was a bad thing. It's just that, like it, it. To me, it seemed like you really kind of had to like line it up on its little hit box. I guess is the way I want to describe it. Overall, though, you know, the game, it was a cute little game, you know, decent little story. The idea that, you know, you catch this dog and you need somewhere to take it and all the pet shelters are are full and they actually make a comment. They're like, yeah, you go down this one place. Um, sunny, it's like Sunny Days shelter. Yeah, it's like, yeah, they have, um, you know. Your friend Quinn's shelter. Right, but it's like, yeah, I mean, they, they put down a lot of dogs so they don't suffer. Or roam the streets, and I'm like, ugh, that's a. I'm I'm a dog guy. I'm, I'm not. I'm not the most animal loving person. Although we have a house full of animals. Because it says like on sunny days, he's like, we can't take it. There's a shelter down the road, but they put down dogs when there's not enough space. Right, right, right. And I was like, man, I don't. That's that's kind of a, a harsh way to open it up, but. That is kind of the crux for the story, because then what you decide to do is you go, well, I'll just start taking care of dogs. And then they set you up in your garage. And the mayor comes and yep. says that you should open your own. A hundred percent. And then from there, it's like, oh, now we have to build. And, and it's a resource management game. It's a simulator in the sense that you're managing resources, you're managing relationships, you're managing food, water, uh, you know, poopy situations and all that stuff. So literally overall, not my type of game. But I, again, that's why when we were given this, I was like, but this is 1000% your type of game. So my general thoughts are, if you're a simulator person, this is for you. If you are a pet person, this is, this is definitely for you. If you have patience to deal with somewhat finicky controls, this is also for you. <laughs> I imagine this game plays very well with mouse and keyboard where you can click directly on what you're trying to do, opposed to using a joystick and holding the ZR button or ZL button me, and hitting A. It's not that like the, the controls are like hard, but it's just like you gotta hold this, press this, mm-hmm. then do this. And I'm like, why can't you just hit one button? Yeah. It's yeah. easier. Yeah, definitely. Um if you think about things like a, from a shooter's perspective, right? Like you you pull your leash out like you're aiming down sight, and then you hit your trigger button. Well, this became dark. <laughs> right. But, you know, on the Switch, you got to hit A, and A is in the position of all the back buttons and everything else that we play. So it's like I kept hitting X, and that wasn't doing I don't I, I fall I fall way harder with the controllers in the beginning than, than I, I expected. So my general thoughts are, you know, it's a it's a game for specific type of person, and that type of person was definitely you. <laughs> Overall, though, it's a pretty charming game, and I think that uh, the story, at least in the way that it set itself up, was very interesting. And it was a it was you know, a decent way to go. Oh, okay, this is how we're getting here. So, what were your general thoughts of the game? Um, so the game was really it was fun to play. Uh, it was like when you like start the game, it has a decent story, Mm -hmm. but over time it almost seems to like not repeat itself, but it makes you feel like you're not really going anywhere. That's exactly how I felt. Like when I, when most games, when there's a story mode, there's going to be some kind of twist or something. This one is just like the mayor's coming, giving you tasks. But if you play the quick play version, it's just a dog doing the same thing. It's just a dog telling you the controls, which the mayor did. It just has a little bit more story in it. And I'm like. It might have been better. Speaking of puppies. <laughs> Milo's at the door. Should I let him know? No, you're good. Just keep going. Um, it was just like the story. I haven't finished it, so I don't know if it's going to do any better. But it's like, where is this going? Well, that's a good thing to point out because it's, it's funny that you mentioned, you know, that you didn't finish the story. And that's because we, on our game that we were playing, we ran out of money. Yeah, you can, and if it, it actually, and that was kind of where I that hurt me. <laughs> yeah, well, that was kind of where I kind of backed off from it. It's like, okay, you can play this game, and you can have a fail state, and That's you can good. play this game for hours and hours and hours. As a matter of fact, on one of our, because we got three game saves going, so what I was doing is I was kind of jumping in between them. Same. And one of them we've we've adopted out like thirty four dogs. Jeez, yeah. I've only adopted like I only adopted out like 
10 and I've been no, playing for one, like 10 one, days. One of them was 14 dogs that were adopted out. One was 34 dogs. And yet we that still we still failed the the our adoption, our our actual um mm-hmm. the game pet game. shelter yeah. failed. You know, so I kind of wish there was a button that you could just like go back the day before so you didn't like lose everything. Yeah. So it was definitely but, a, you know, in the sense of a simulator, it definitely does its job because you can simulate a business into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you can go bankrupt. And that was us. We went bankrupt. And I, I I felt like it was uh it was kind of unforgiving in the sense that there are certain aspects, and I didn't mean to cut you off on your general thoughts, but mm-hmm. I think for a review purpose, that's a really good point to to emphasize is that like you could jump into the game and you're playing, you're playing, you're playing, but then you start getting these little messages like you're overworking, you're doing you're in overtime, like you're mm-hmm. you're you know, the longer you spend in there working, the more of your resources you're using, and therefore you can actually you get like go, a reef uh, reef source um like tax after every day yep which honestly i found super annoying but one thing that made me really happy was when i went into settings and i found out you can like turn down the amount of like you get taxed you can turn that down which i did you can like (laughs) turn up how quickly your dogs get like infected if like if like the sickness spreading that's right right. i turned that all the way up because i wanted a bit more of a challenge and you can also um there's one more that i turned down yeah it was like some like when you first start the game, the adopters don't want too much, but then their bar just gets higher and higher. Mm-hmm. You can turn that down, so it just kind of stays a bit lower. But sometimes it will get a little bit bigger. But I turned that down because I was it was getting kind of annoying in my opinion. But to be fair, I, I did not feel like cleaning the dogs. Yeah, and I'm not really a skill check person, and it was kind of a skill check. Definitely to clean some skill them. check. There was another issue I ran into too is when you go and you try to get one dog, but he's in a kennel with multiple dogs. In trying to grab the one that you want, and I had that, I, that was a problem for me. But if you actually move the like thumbstick, you it switches perspective. So which I one? had a, I just I didn't struggled. know that though. I, yeah, I struggled with that. I couldn't get it. And there was a couple times where, and this is a, something that obviously they had in mind, but they have a, they have a um, unstuck button button in the menu. For when your game sticks or your leash gets stuck or your game mm-hmm. freezes, or whatever. And there were multiple times messing around with this game where we found ourselves needing to hit that button. Honestly, one time with one of the glitches I found, it wouldn't work. It didn't I, work. It, it, it didn't work either time. The so, stuff yeah. didn't work. Yeah. So, and there was a couple of leash glitches. Man, there was one real bad one where you and yeah. I were fighting with it for a while. So, um, I just, just had to restart. I would just say, buyer be warned. There are. Many, it, many, but important. Because we had what we had what, what ten or fifteen, a ten to fourteen dogs adopted, and then the leash got stuck. Mm-hmm. And that you know you could essentially break your game after that's what seven eight hours well, into it. One, yeah, because the problem is, is what happens. Are you okay if I talk about that for a second? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. The problem with like that that glitch specifically, we just kind of hinted at it. The actual glitch is. Every now and then when you, like, get a dog in your hand and then you, like, put it in the adoption place, you're stuck holding your leash. And there's a button you have to click to go into your inventory. And you need your inventory to, like, get the pooper scooper, to get the water bucket, to pick up food. And you can't care for the dogs without being able to get your inventory. But you'll be, like, stuck holding the leash. And that's a really big problem. Because then you can't get into your inventory. I guess you continue the game with holding your leash. But that's not going to go very well for you. <laughs> You're just going to have a bunch of stinky, unfed, unwatered <laughs> dogs. And they're just going to be like one star. And then no one's going to want to adopt them. And you're stuck not getting any money. And the problem with that is it's like the game saves after every day. And the problem with that is I wish it would save more frequently. Because when a, it, there's a glitch like that, you have to like X out of the game. Like cancel what you have. And you start back from the beginning of the day, which is really annoying because that that pushes back all the adoptions you've had all all the times. I sometimes like every other day I'll feed all the dogs, pushes that back. So you got to go through that again, and yeah, yep. it's hard. So overall, though, gameplay wise, because I want to break it into actual tangible sections that we mm-hmm. can talk about. So gameplay wise, it plays fairly well. There's some jank in the controllers, in my opinion, and it sounds like from your your experience there was some sticky points and some things that overall kind of maybe got in the game's way but for the most part it's pretty manageable 
it's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty self-explanatory, you know, as far as like maintaining the mm-hmm. dog's relationships and their needs. Yeah, like where to take them, right? How to, yeah. And so overall, from a simulator pet simulator gameplay standpoint, I think it does a good job. I really enjoyed the game. Yes, and I think it gives you a a, a decent amount of things to do. It, it can get overwhelming, and it can be very zen like in a sense that. And we, we, we talked about this earlier, so I kind of want to pivot from gameplay into visuals, but it does look like a very clean Stardew Valley. Oh, yeah. I love the, like, pictures of the dogs that are, like, right there. Yep. I, like, the dogs, when you're, like, holding them, they're just cute. They don't, you can't really tell what their face is, like, fur details when you actually have them out. Like, right there. Mm-hmm. But when you actually look at their profile, they're really cute. And I just, like... I love that about it because they they do a really good job showing the dogs, and I love the how they like um, listed out the um, if you go into their profile. I love how it listed that out, mm-hmm. and like it listed out what their favorite kind of food is, how clean they are, how hungry they are, and things like that, like their personality traits. My problem is, is a lot of times you'll get a dog that like when you go into their profile, it won't say anything. They don't. It you haven't like found any traits. I feel like. But there's no way to find a trait. You're just given a dog that you don't know has any traits. And I kind of wish they all had traits. Because I know sometimes you're supposed to match it. And if you only have like two dogs that match with your five sections of dogs that you're giving the person to choose from. You're like giving them five dogs. You only have two that match the personality traits that she wants. You're stuck finding ones. And sometimes I'll just stick with the ones that don't have any personality trait. But I kind of wish that they did. Yeah, so yep. I can match them better. Yep, I get that. I get that specifically. All right. So, what did you think about? So, we talked about gameplay. I think the visuals. I mean, it's 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 colorful. It's clean. Mm-hmm. I think that it's got an interesting little art style. Uh, I really like it. Very Stardew Valley is what is mm-hmm. the first thing I I thought of when I saw it. Because mm-hmm, that's when I was like, this looks just like Stardew Valley, and I brought it to you, and you're like. This is Stardew Valley. Yeah, and and the thing is, is like I think menu wise, like things aren't overly busy. It's not. It's not like it's so the text is so small you can't read or you know, there's so much stuff on screen and that it's you know visually it impairs the visuals. It's it's pretty straightforward. It looks pretty good. They did a great job with that. I do have one problem. Sure. Um when I'm in build mode in Sunny Day Shelter, there's like these double kennels like what's listed there. Mm-hmm. There's some of the bigger kennels where like more dogs can go into. But when I go into it on my own shelter, it, they're all locked. Yes. And there wasn't I didn't I didn't read it at least if there was something that told me how to unlock those and that's been a big problem for me because I've been like th- some of these dogs don't want to be with people and then some of them say like social good with dogs and I'm like well then I can put these two golden retrievers together but the kennels are locked and that's become a really big issue in my opinion because I'm like how it just I feel like I should be able to unlock those easier cuz I don't know how to unlock them yeah, well, a lot of those unlocks can't come with progressing throughout the story and getting a certain amount of money and expanding your shelter. Mm-hmm. Also, and it tells you about buying expansions where you have more land to upgrade your mm-hmm. shelter. I didn't, it says at the bottom, z- zero out of ten expansions for me. I don't know how to expand. I, when I read it, I didn't see something that told me how to expand. It just says you can. And I was like, well, how do I do this? I don't really know how to expand my land. Well, unfortunately, we went bankrupt before we could really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you What do you reckon? Fifteen hours, twenty hours into the game, we went bankrupt. I've been playing for like five days. Now. Well, I know you've been playing for five days, but I would have. Yeah, I'm, it was like I, that was my like first that save. one. Yeah, <laughs> it was the one I've been spending the longest. Well, time. again, I've been again, I've been going behind you and playing as well too. So it's uh yeah we easy, easily fifteen twenty hours, and I was like. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, I'm not a dog shelter owner. <laughs> I love this game, and I will be playing it like after. Oh, as absolutely, well. absolutely. Okay, really so what do you think about the music? Okay, so the music options. I actually went to settings, and it says that every day it's like a different song. Yep. So the music, I I liked it. It was very calming. It wasn't very like loud either. And if you wanted to, you could turn it down. I mean, honestly, um, I liked the music. It was a very like calming choice. I do, I don't know if I, like, wish that you could almost change it, but I don't know, because, like, that might not be some people's, like, preferred music type. Yeah, it was, uh, that, so, especially early off in the beginning, there was, like, a piano 
song that continued to loop over and over and over <laughs> as I was trying to figure out how to play and I was trying to leash my first dogs. I'm like, it's like dee, 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 dee. and I love see. So for me, music, you know, as a musician, music stands out to me and I like really want it to grab me. As a matter of fact, I've had this sounds lame, but I've had Minecraft just kind of sitting on in the background. It's true. And just listen. It just and it's just been on, and I I like that. I can call me Zen like music in the background. Um, and I listened to a lot of music score. I, I thought that like this worked. It was a little bit much mm-hmm. in the beginning. I almost want to say like one of the songs. I don't really know which one it was. I wasn't paying attention. It almost wasn't like annoying, but after a while, I was just like. Can I turn this off? Yeah. And I didn't see a button that I could turn it off with. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But if I turn down the actual switch, the problem is it makes this like bell sound when either someone enters or you get a new 100%. dog. 100%. And it'll be like neglected dog if you yes. miss the dog. And I was like, wait, I didn't hear a sound because it's turned down so I don't have to hear the music. So there were certain there are certain tracks that were, or certain sections where it seemed like the music was a little zen-ish, but there were other times where it was very busy. And I remember turning it down because I'm like, that's a little, it's just, it was very, it was mixed loud too. It seemed like, it seemed like the music was a little mixed louder than the actual game itself. And I couldn't hear the bells dinging. And I was like, wait a minute. Why does it say three neglected dogs? Yeah, I was like, I just, I just checked on you little nerds. So, all right. So the game, we've, we've, we've touched on how the game plays. We touched on some of the glitches. We touched on some of the things that we, that we, that we liked, mm-hmm. you know, overall, I think that it was a good experience, and I think that this is a great game, you know, for people, people like me. you. I think that if you are, you know, looking for a pet shelter experience, this one nails it. A if lot you of times are, I'll be looking for a game like this, and I'm like, I don't want to just stare at a dog. Right. I want to actually do stuff, and this fulfilled that. I liked this game. And there were so many games that I've purchased on the Nintendo Switch for you to kind of give you that sims like experience and what what is it's so funny because you always want to play sims pets you always want sims Mm -hmm. expansions for the pets and stuff and this is essentially a sims game with four pets and a pet shelter which is what you want to do so uh zoe thank you for sitting down and discussing this game with me i hope that you guys have heard this and you you take hey take it with a grain of salt our experience might not be your experience but there are some things to look out for. Overall, it's a cute little game. I think it's great. Uh, I think for what it's trying to do, it does a great job at it. I think it does have some bugs and some glitches. So it's not a perfect game. But I think that, you know, if you're looking for a it's pet like shelter. It's 9.5 out of 10. I really like this game. I'm, for me, it's, I can try to be objective because it's not my style of game. But I think it if does what it wants to do. So I'm thinking more in the 7.5 range. I was written in. I, I, I love this game. But I would just say I recommend it. <laughs> absolutely. I absolutely recommend it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to ProvenGamer.com uh, for all of your reviews, your podcasts, and your news fixes. Thank you, Zoe, for joining me. This is Zoe Butterfly. I'm Resident Daryl, and we'll catch you on the next one. Adios.